Machota at 5.30. But former Oregon Ducks offensive lineman, Paul, you sent this out, mm -hmm. Doug Brenner, $100 million in damages uh, against the NCAA. He's a former Oregon offensive lineman. He was going through some offseason, I guess, workout or conditioning, um, and – he got sick along with some others as well. I think it was 2 7, 2017. Now, do you not remember the whole Willie Taggart to do oh, over yeah, the workouts? That's what this is talking yeah. about. So, um, hundred million dollars is he is he can sue the NCAA or do you sue Oregon or do you sue Willie Taggart? He's, he's a, I mean, it's everybody's named. It's Willie Taggart. It's the NCAA. It's Oregon. It's the strength coach. Everybody's there. Willie Taggart uh, is attending the trial. I saw and. Uh, I, I, I do think it's kind of – I mean, and maybe this was in response to that, but one of the knocks on Willie Taggart at Florida State was their strength program was, was kind of in shambles after he left. Well, and, maybe and, he was and, scared and to and have maybe, one. Yeah, maybe he was. I don't know. I mean, th th that would make sense. So, uh, I uh, I mean, I don't know if you're going to get $100 million. And sometimes you say $100 million so you get three, you know. But, uh, I, I mean, was this guy going to make $100 million no, in his life? I doubt as it. A, as a football player? I don't know. I mean, it's even for offensive linemen, it's hard to get to that number. You know, high-level offensive linemen, you got to be pretty darn good. So, I don't know. I, it's it's going to be hard to prove, it, especially if you – I mean, who else is in the suit with him? Who else is going to testify to this? Who? Else, I mean, are you going to be in the suit with this guy if you're not getting any money out of it? I, I, I don't understand how that all works. but I It just seems like everything's a lawsuit, huh? Well, it's, we're in the most litigious country in, in the world, so, yeah. So, that that's a story there that, um, you know, and I remember but your Look, if he has a legitimate me. beef, go sue somebody, but, I mean, it's, it's yeah, sometimes hard to prove. And here's where I'm going to get scolded, and that's fine. Uh, strength and conditioning coaches, whether it was Kaz Kazadi or whether it's now with Vic Valoria or any school in America, any program, anything uh, – you get pushed to a certain limit. Now, he eventually had some kidney damage or whatever, so I get that. But that's what I remember asking Kaz Kazadi when I sat down with him that time. How do you know when it's too much? How do you know how to push somebody, whether he's a freshman who's just coming in from high school or a guy that's a grown-ass man who's a fourth- or fifth-year football player? How do you know? And I don't know if you do know. I don't know if you do know. Are there certain things? How do you, I mean, some guys can collapse easier than others. Or women, athletes, people, right? So I, I don't know about that. I'm not, I'm not well, sure I mean, where that's going to go. He's got permanent kidney damage, he is alleging, from the workouts. So, I mean, it's, it's not like it's just a oh, money grab. I mean, he's got legitimate complaints. Now, of course, it's a lawsuit, so believe what you want to believe as far as the allegations go. But it's not like this was just the junction boys and it's just young people being too soft dude's got kidney issues that might uh at least in the lawsuit it alleges uh rhabdomyolysis or, or, or i believe is the name that could shorten his lifespan by a decade now i don't know if that's just doctor talk or whatever but i mean if that's if that's factual and that's that's something that actually could occur to him then then yeah, I, I would say that strength and conditioning probably went too far. It's also the fact that if you read through the lawsuit, is that not all these guys, uh, or at least in, in one case, not a certified coach. So you had amateurs, basically, or non-professionals who were helping to run these workouts that apparently went way too extreme. And, I mean, for as much as, like, every person will go, oh, it's in my day or whatever, like, there are examples of people crossing the line and doing too much and not giving water and, you know, and not knowing when to call it quits, especially if they're not professionally trained or licensed. So, you know, um, there, there's, there's two sides to a story and, and his side may be the well, truthful one. When, when I was uh, first starting out at radio, uh, there was a story about a, a player who had collapsed and died in a practice and the two co-hosts at the time said, well, this never used to happen back in the day. We never got water. So no, it used to happen all the time. We just didn't have the internet. Exactly. So if it happened, right. if you were in Stephenville, Texas, and it happened in Minnesota, unless you were really reading all the news that you could every day and going to the library, you probably never heard about it. And so now we hear about everything. So, uh, nothing's more or less than it was. It's probably about the same as it was. We just know more now. And, you know, I was right at the end of playing high school football when coaches would withhold water for a little while. But even then, they knew it was like, okay, you're not going to get a water break at the second whistle that normally, but you're getting one at the third because, you know, it, things are different now. And, and so, because we know more and we, you know, you don't, not to get, not to give people water when it's hot and, and you, they need water. So, 
things are different now. Well, and I think part of the problem is, is that there's too many coaches or like Craig mentioned that don't know it. It's different now. They think like, yeah, hey, I'm going to push this kid to his limit and all that stuff. And it's sometimes it's not that if you're a Kaskazati or any kind of strength coach, your benefit is just pushing them just to the limit and then drawing them back because your money is made by the kids getting better, not falling off the team because they can't work out anymore. Yeah, and uh, here's the other thing whenever I hear comparisons to like, well, back in my day, um, and, and there's some that are valid, but uh, lifestyles are entirely different mm-hmm. now versus then. This isn't, uh, you know, the Junction boys were growing up working outside, you know, outside all the time, in the heat. They weren't playing video games all day. <laughs> like, they weren't on TikTok all day. They weren't in the AC all day. They weren't. Man, I mean, look at the treatment of athletes now versus back then as well. I mean, these guys are super hydrated all the time. They've got their nutrition checked out. They've got all that checked out. Those guys back then didn't have that. And, you know, even then, like the extremes that they apparently went to, like that might just be a normal practice for all we know. Now it's just been so glamorized and, you know, and, and, and uh, put into such a, a legend that it's become books and movies and all of that. But, I mean, yeah, bodies are different now versus, versus what they used to be. So going out in the heat, you know, 50 years ago when you were, more used to it you know still really hard but not might is not the same as you know somebody who's been used to being on the couch for hours upon a day all of a sudden going out in the 99 degree heat and trying to do workouts so i I don't know i mean you never know with lawsuits who's who's telling the truth i mean it does seem like this uh does have some merit to it as far as willie taggart and, and how involved he was and you know in terms of what they were doing and what they were not doing and how far they pushed it and and so it seems like he might have a little bit of a case but uh then again you i don't know uh it's it's the legal system so who well, the heck knows when you file a lawsuit that means you have your case and then you also will have evidence that could be used against you i don't know what that would be well, Maybe I mean, nothing whatsoever. Could be the fact that they put, you know, people involved on leave uh, after this happened because guys were getting hospitalized. Uh, so, you know, that that was a, you know, if you're the, the, the prosecution, I guess, I mean, that's what you can point to is the reaction that Oregon had in which they, they had to address it. So clearly it wasn't just a matter of one guy. isn't that a default thing you're going to do? automatically because it's under investigation isn't that what we do now or is that what happens we got it you can't work now or you're on administrative leave or whatever yeah i suppose so but if they didn't feel he didn't do anything wrong i mean i, I know what you're saying is like it's just a precautionary deal but um I, I don't know in reading through the details when i did uh, a couple days back i mean it does seem like there is some merit to it now to what extent the jury agrees with it or whatever i i have no idea i don't know how they'll view it and i don't know how all those details will be taken in but I mean, would it be all that surprising if a workout went too extreme? Like, is this really that crazy of an idea? No. I don't think so. I mean, so. happened at Maryland, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, to the point where DJ Durkin couldn't coach until he could coach in the SEC. Yep. Uh, so, you know, it's happened before. It'll happen again, no matter how many precautions people take. And I hope this young man's all right. And whatever should happen, I hope happens. I want to get to the uh, Saban comments, Craig and Paul, just a minute. But a couple of chat 